Welcome to PLM in 10 Minutes, a SimData PLM leadership tutorial. SimData is the leading independent global strategic management consulting and research authority focused exclusively on the PLM market. We are dedicated to maximizing our clients' ability to design and deliver innovative products and services through the application of PLM. PLM is a strategic business approach. It's not just technologies. It's a consistent set of business solutions, integrating people, processes, information, and business systems. It's about the collaborative creation, use, management, and dissemination of product-related intellectual assets. It is the full virtual product and the virtual processes. So all the product or plant definition information and all the product or plant process definitions. It, expand, it supports the extended enterprise and spans the full life cycle from concept through life. The intellectual assets that we're talking about are comprised of all the components of the enterprise's product and process definition. And these assets are key to innovation. Being able to have clear, concise, and valid information to make decisions on allow people to be more innovative. These, these intellectual assets are comprised of all the mechanical, electrical, software, and documentation components of discrete products, for example, you know, formulas, recipes, specifications, and perhaps documentation that deal with the process uh, industry type products like a, a beverage, for example. And it's also important to note, it's not just the product definition, it's the virtual process definition as well. So all the business and manufacturing process definitions that are within the scope of the life cycle. So these two components, provide all the information necessary to go ahead and bring that product to the market and support it for its full life. PLM drives product and process definition. It's about creating and transforming intellectual assets into deliverable assets. So the intellectual assets, the, you know, the collective ideas of the organizations or the extended enterprises employees are transformed in the life cycle to the deliverable assets, the product and or services of the organization. Often people consider the transformation processes where innovation takes place, uh, but it's also in the definition of the organization's intellectual assets. Because those assets, that, that information that needs to be clear, concise, and valid, which is managed by PLM, the virtual product and the virtual process definition, are keys to enabling innovation. People need to have time and the right information so they, are, they can innovate on it. And it provides that foundational element that allows people to be innovative from a product, product and process point of view. The goal, major goals of PLM is about efficiency. It's about getting products to market more quickly, being able to ramp up production more quickly, to be able to increase profitability, uh, beat your competitors to the market to gain a greater market share, to be able to premium price, to be able to maintain your product in a more efficient manner to improve in-service operations. So it's about managing your intellectual assets for the and throughout the complete life cycle. And it's about you know product and process innovation that improves ultimately business performance from an end-to-end -end perspective. It does span the whole life cycle, right? It touches, PLM touches all phases of a product's life and the entire supply uh, and value chain. You know, starting with requirements into developing out the portfolio of products and projects that you're going to execute, uh, being able to plan and do your conceptual design, moving into the product and manufacturing engineering phase, to define out the full detail of what that product and its processes are gonna look like, being able to validate that product and validate those processes, being able to then take that, that those definitions and execute upon them in manufacturing, uh, being able to make sure that you're compliant uh, and that you can test and have the right levels of quality into supporting sales and distribution, uh, the in-service operations and maintaining not just the, the physical uh, plant, for example, or product, but also the definitions around it to be able to maintain it better and repair it better. And ultimately then end of life or next life. Uh, in the circular economy, we talk about the, the re-exes, the reuse, the repurpose, the remanufacture, the recover, the recycle, the retirement, uh, so that the product in many forms could live on and sometimes it's upgraded and lives on yet again uh, in the life cycle itself. And when you talk about products, uh, historically we've talked about uh, manufactured products, but it's not just about discrete products. Uh, projects are products, plants are projects assets and facilities, all these things have information related to what is their structure? What are the components that make up the, them up? How do we maintain them? How do we re uh, recycle components that are, exist within those assets? How do we make sure that they're upgradable? Uh, so all these things, everything that we do in our organization, no matter what we deliver, products or services that we deliver, have a set of information that describes what they are. 
that have to be maintained uh, for their life cycles. So we look at the, the, the core of a business is those intellectual assets and the physical assets of people, finances, and facilities. So the intellectual assets are quite important and they really make up that product and process definition. And if you look and apply PLM to it, then it's about that interaction with customers, uh, bringing that information, extending that information out and creating that full product and process definition, the virtual product and the virtual processes, and being able to then manage that, that definition set for the entire life cycle and sharing that information set or parts of that set with the transaction systems like ERP enterprise resource planning, which is executing upon the definition to actually end up creating that deliverable asset. There's other transaction systems that are often used uh, like uh, customer relationship management, supply chain management, which also can use that product and process definition appropriately. There is quite a bit of overlap between these two uh, major areas, the virtual product and the physical product. Uh, so the intellectual assets uh, created and managed by PLM and the deliverable assets uh, ultimately created and managed by ERP. Uh, the quite a bit of the overlap is around that information set, which has to be executed within an ERP. So the, the bill of material, for example, the part information, supplier information, and others. And there's a number of uh, information sets which are just exist within the uh, execution system uh, or enterprise resource planning system. There's a, the, the third part is the execution system itself, the manufacturing uh, execution systems, which receive the definition of what to do from PLM and then are told when to do it from ERP. And in many organizations, we're seeing these three uh, major uh, domains emerge. The companies are structuring a lot of their, their systems around PLM, ERP, and the manufacturing execution domain. Uh, ultimately, there's been three major business drivers uh, for industrial companies and why they're pursuing a PLM strategy. The first one is doing more with less. So the lack of resources of all kinds, the lack of money, the lack of time, the lack of people, the lack of patience. Uh, the, the complexity then, the product complexity, there's more embedded software, there's more features and functions, there's more regulations that have to be dealt with. These are all uh, increasing the product complexity. And the final one is supply chain complexity. Uh, so more suppliers, you know, a supplier one day, a competitor the other day, more responsibilities, more distribution of responsibilities. So it's, it's about complexity and managing complexity and doing more with less. So PLM's need for many companies is very clear. There's just too many systems, there's too many processes, uh, there's too many people that create, share, and use information. So making that complex simple, reducing duplication, harmonizing systems and processes are key to PLM. And you know, making the disconnected connected. Uh, lots of different solutions out there within a typical organization that have information that are related to product that have to be brought together to have an end-to-end -end view of that information set from concept through life. Uh, so companies are demanding an architecture that allows uh, a comp comprehensive set of heterogeneous functionality and process enabling capabilities to come together uh, to, to actually be able to manage that life cycle from an end-to-end -end perspective. And it's, this is really important. It's, you know, PLM matters. It, it, it supports and, and validates and verifies and enables uh, integrity of information, so the accuracy and completeness of information. And that's very important because that's directly, directly uh, tied to the effectiveness of an organization. Uh, the more uh, the higher the integrity of your information, the accuracy and completeness, the more effective that you're going to be. And PLM plays a major role in that because it's about making sure that the information, the product and process information is clear, concise, and valid. So it's accurate and it's complete so that you can make better decisions on it. And ultimately, to innovate product and process, you need valid information and you need time to think differently and utilize that information in new and improved ways. So uh, there's quite a bit of more information about PLM. You know, please uh, visit our uh, website at simdata.com. Uh, we offer a PLM Basics uh, Leadership Program, for example, which is a three one-hour self-paced sessions. Uh, there's uh, public classes. There's private classes. Uh, there's quite a bit of information on our website about PLM that you can download, uh, white papers and case studies and other information. And we would ask you to um, you know, go spend some time there. Uh, you're welcome to contact us if you have any questions about PLM. Uh, PLM is very much a global market uh, with uh, it being applied to multiple industries, not just discrete as I mentioned, but also process. And we actually even see it starting to be applied to other industries such as uh, the insurance industry, uh, financial industries and others. So good luck with your, your PLM uh, endeavor. And uh, we hope that this uh, short uh, 10 minute uh, PLM introduction helps you. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and uh, give us a call and let us know. Thank you very much.